Hello again and welcome to the Larry Shiat Show, all presented by Union Wireless. And we're going to be visiting with assistant coach Jeremy Shiat today as uh, he was the acting head coach. He had the scout for the Utah State game. We'll also go back and kind of visit about the Fresno State game. It was a busy week for the Cowboys. Two more big non or two more big conference games for Wyoming started on a Wednesday in Fresno. And there's another conference game that kind of goes right down to the wire, Coach. It, it's, I'll tell you the truth, they, they could probably uh, take our season and sell it to coaches nationwide on a special situations DVD. But, uh, you know, Dave, you're exactly right. It was kind of a, a, a roller coaster week, uh, so to speak. And, um, you know, Fresno, we, we were right there. You always, as a, as a coach, want to have a shot to win on the road, you know, in the, in the last four or five minutes. Um, I think our guys put ourselves in position to be in position like we had so many other times during the year. Just couldn't close it down the stretch, and uh, you got to take your hats off to Fresno. They made some big plays down the stretch to get the win. Yeah, pretty good basketball team on their floor, and it showed that night. And then the Cowboys come home Saturday afternoon, last Saturday afternoon against Utah State. I thought this was a great game, and I'm, uh, I'm not so sure this might not have been the best the Cowboys have played, certainly from start to finish in conference play always leaning on that defense, outstanding Cowboy defense throughout, but the offense picked it up and it was a pretty good game for the Pokes, huh? Yeah, Dave, you know, I think it was probably our, our best 40 minutes where uh, of offense and defense. You know, we probably had better games offensively and possibly better games defensively, but just as a whole, I uh, thought the guys really had poise, especially to keep a lead. You know, I think Utah State on multiple times in the second half tried to uh, make a run and challenge us from an energy standpoint. Uh, but our guys had a, had a great feel for the game, when to run some clock, when to attack, and always making the extra pass. It was so nice to see the Cowboys finish off a game. Uh, I thought they did so well with that. In the second half, the lead was up to 20 a number of times. And I thought the Cowboys just really finished strong. No, it, it, it did. And, and again, I think it was definitely a team effort. Um, 15 assists, uh, five turnovers. The guys were not afraid to share the ball. We did a, we did a great job of giving everybody a touch. Uh, and I think that that really gave the entire team confidence in order to, to, to finish Utah State off and get the win. Yeah, big win for the Cowboys on Saturday, five and three in the Mountain West Conference, heading to New Mexico and Las Vegas. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on the Larry Shiat Show presented by Union Wireless. We're back with more after this. to Medlin. That's a tough shot. That is a three that missed. Nance tipped it around and saved it nicely. Cowboys want to run. Adams down the lane. Layups. Finger roll is in. Smartphones. Your connection to the world. The possibilities are unlimited and your plan should be too. With unlimited cube from Union Wireless, get talk, text, and high-speed data without limits. Only from Union Wireless. Welcome back, everybody. Our special guest today, Derek Cook Jr. We all call him DC. Um, Derek, I know this is uh, a good day to talk because you had a heck of a game the other night against Utah State, and it had to be a real confidence builder for you. Yeah, it was a big confidence builder just for me, just because lately I haven't been playing as much because the coaches have, we've been going against like smaller teams, so the coaches thought it would just be best to have a smaller lineup, and so I haven't been playing as much. So it's kind of been like attacking my confidence a little bit, but the coaches just told me to keep my head, my time will come, and like against Utah State, it happened. Of course, um, you're pretty much new to the game of basketball. You were a football guy, uh, and, and talk a little bit about uh, the decision to play basketball rather than football. Well, I mean, in high school, I mean, I played football for like two of my years. I think one year I was injured, so I couldn't play that year. And then my senior year of high school, I, the, the coach wanted me to try out for basketball, so uh, I tried out, but little did I know he bought back like 12 of his guys, so it was like two spots left. <laughs> so I didn't make the uh, roster or whatever. It's a funny story, actually. 
just because like I, I like gave it my all and I didn't notice that like we were going with 20 guys and they were all competing for two spots. <laughs> so then like um, after high school was done, I was pretty small, about 6'3", 6'4", really like skinny, like 155, 165 probably at most. And uh, I didn't have any scholarships, of course. <laughs> I was like a subpar player. I wasn't like the best receiver on the team. And we had a guy like Alex Blake, who's our main go-to guy. And like, so I wasn't looking to go anywhere for football. So college was the next step, but I didn't have the money for it. So that's why I took a year off to work two jobs. And then within that year is when like the growth spurt happened. And then <laughs> got a call up from one of my friends to uh, come play basketball. And then like this guy named Sean Thompson was there. He's like, have I ever thought about playing college ball? Told him not really, just because I don't like basketball. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he's like, yeah, hey, well, if you uh, if you work with me and you uh, show me that you care about it, I can probably get it's like I'm going for you. And then like he gets me into this workout with uh, Coach Eshbaugh for Cloud County, who was like recruiting a guy named Devon Branch. And like I came to this workout, he seen my athleticism, and he was more so saying, I can give this kid a, a chance to get off the streets, just like. He was going to redshirt me. I didn't know he was going to redshirt me. And then, like, when I get to the junior college in Kansas, it's when I knew I was going to redshirt, and it's like the hardest year of my life. Mm -hmm. And then, so having the basketball dream. And here you are. What's been uh, the biggest adjustment for you? Uh, certainly, you're trying to learn the game, but what, is, what kind of adjustment has it been for you? Well, one, just seeing things as they happen. Like, it's easy to, like, talk to, talk to somebody about basketball, but when you're in the act, it's hard to, like, see certain screens, certain actions, and then have to be able to call it and then just play around it. And another thing for me has been fatigue, just because like in football, you, you go by downs. You run your sprint, you run your, you run your route, and you can get subbed out. Basketball, you're constantly going back and forth, back and forth, unless a foul happens or a timeout is called. Cowboys um, have, have done very well in conference play, obviously, and uh, we're going to hear a scouting report here shortly. But uh, this is a tough week coming up for the Pokes. Yeah, we got uh, New Mexico. That's the only thing we're worried about right now, just because New Mexico is the next game. So we have to worry about them practice today and tomorrow, like what we can do for the game Wednesday. I know you're really proud about your academic side, and uh, you're a double major. Uh, talk a little bit about having to deal with that and uh, the the demands of, of basketball. Well, it's a lot harder than people think. Like a lot of the students that you would talk to, they think that athletes have it made. But the ones who really care about the academics is actually hard for us because like we have to actually put a lot of effort into like the work we do because the teachers are already on our backs because they think we want it easy. But like it's not, we don't really want it easy. We just want to like try to do both without having like to worry about it every day. So it's constant working. Like I know with our academic guy Bruce, he always has me in like the rack doing study hall hour just so he can make sure I'm always on top of my work. Now what are you majoring in and what would you like to do with that double major once you're done? Well I'm double majoring in psychology and social sciences. Uh, my main goal right now is that if basketball doesn't work out, I love working with kids so I plan on going home, maybe going to like a youth center or something and just working with like troubled kids who aren't really given a second chance. Well. Very special guy right here. We're glad he uh, chose basketball after all. Derek Cook Jr., why don't you all stay with us? Dave will be right back with a scouting report on New Mexico and UNLV. When you book at FlyFrontier.com, you get great stuff. Like exclusive fares, more miles. A free carry-on. You even get to pick your seat. And everyone likes to pick their seat. I know I do. Once I pick my seat right smack dab in the middle of... Stop! Stop. Grizz, we're talking about picking your seat on the plane. Wait, you pick your seat on the plane? Now that's disgusting. Get more perks, lower fees, and a free carry-on. Book today at flyfrontier.com. And welcome back to the Larry Shiat Show, presented by Union Wireless. Well, why don't we take a look at the New Mexico Lobos? Let's learn all we can about the Lobos, shall we? And here's the guy we can learn it from, Associate Head Coach Scott Duncan. He has the scout for the New Mexico Lobos on Wednesday night. Well, we've seen the Lobos. We know a little bit about them. Had them right here on this floor. Uh, took them to overtime. That was a great game. Uh, didn't turn out the way you wanted. But what about New Mexico now? Anything different about these Lobos since we saw them last, Coach? Well, I think they uh, definitely have improved. Uh, they got better when Kirk went out and missed uh, three games. It allowed guys like Greenwood, Delaney, Thomas to all contribute more. 
and they played a huge part in their wins. Um, you know, Kirk didn't play at Colorado State, hard place to play at. Greenwood uh, is terrific in that game. Delaney is terrific in that game. Then they go to Utah State, one of the tougher places to play in our conference and um, you know, beat them pretty handily at Utah State. So they are playing with a great deal of confidence. Now that Kirk is back, uh, started again Saturday, had a great game, a double-double Saturday, and they beat uh, San Jose pretty handily. So you know, this is a team that uh, plays terrific, as we all know, at home. Uh, they have the best crowd in the conference, uh, and they're playing at a very, very, very high level. I think the first of two very difficult road venues for the Cowboys this week, but the pit is a special place. I, I don't know if, uh, if uh, folks have not had the chance to catch a game live in the pit. It's kind of a special experience. Tough place for the Cowboys to go try and beat a good New Mexico team. But what a venue this is. Oh, it's a great venue. And I, I really think our guys love playing in great venues. You know, New Mexico sold out. Uh, San Diego State sold out. Vegas sold out. Colorado State usually is sold out when we play them. Uh, Utah State now is a place that is a sellout on most Mountain West games. So our players enjoy that. They enjoy playing in front of a lot of people. So uh, I don't think the crowd will be nearly as much of a factor uh, as the players are for the Lobos. Yeah, well, there's a little bit on the New Mexico Lobos. And again, the Cowboys and New Mexico Wednesday night, 9 p.m. Mountain Time is the tap time for that game, the Cowboys against New Mexico. Stay with us, we have more to come. We'll come back and take a look at the Nevada Las Vegas running Rebels right after this. Well, we heard all about the New Mexico Lobos, the second leg of this two-game road trip for the Cowboys coming up this week. will be at Nevada, Las Vegas. The Cowboys will be in Las Vegas to take on the Running Rebels Saturday night. And uh, boy, here is another tough team. We're going to get the scout from assistant coach Jeremy Shiat. And this is a very, very talented team. I think we say that just about every year, Jeremy. <laughs> but uh, at the same time, this particular season, Vegas, uh, the run Rebels are loaded. And they're definitely running, and that's for sure. Um, you know, UNLV is a terrific team. Uh, you know, they've gotten off to a very good start in conference play. Uh, and, and again, it, like you talked about, Dave, it's no different than the last couple of years. Uh, extremely talented. We're going to have to have a, a level of discipline, not only to play against a team such as UNLV, but to do it in a hostile environment as the Thomas and Mack Center will be. It is one of the, I think, great venues in college basketball, isn't it? The Cowboys play in the pit, and then they go to Thomas and Mack, and Thomas and Mack Center really is one of the great places to play, I think. No, it is. You know, uh, UNLV's fans, they have great passion for their team. Uh, they're kind of the biggest show in town, so to speak, as far as sports go. Uh, and, and, and their fans do a great job of getting their guys fired up. It's definitely going to be, you know, a game where there'll be a lot of emotion at the beginning of the game. And then, and then hopefully as the game wears on, the emotion will fade and, you know, our habits can kind of kick in and we can stay connected and together. Well, you know, tough place to play, tough place to get a win, certainly. But this Cowboy team has reacted to the road very, very well, especially here in conference play. Good road outfit, this, these Cowboys. You know, they have been. I think that that says a lot about their resiliency. Um, you know, no matter how, how the game uh, before has gone or maybe the, the play before, good or bad, you know, our guys have been able to kind of move and, and, and either not, you know, let one mistake lead to another. Uh, but focus on the present and the task at hand. And uh, especially in a, in a game such as UNLV, where I'm sure there's going to be lots of runs made by both teams, that's going to be important in order for them to keep their composure on the road. Yeah, it really will be. So a big week for the Cowboys, both on the road Wednesday night at Albuquerque, at New Mexico in Albuquerque. That's a 9 p.m. Mountain Time tap time, by the way. Then on Saturday night, the Cowboys at Nevada, Las Vegas, 8 p.m., the tip-off. Mountain time for the Cowboys and the running Rebels. Well, that's going to do it for us here on the Larry Shiat Show, presented by Union Wireless. We'll see you next time. We'll run down all the highlights and more chat about these two games this week. That'll do it for us. So long, everybody.